Kings and Queens, hello, my name is Ocean Madisang and I am from Talita Kumi News Report and today we have an interview with a young gentleman who just knows how to select the right words and to say the right things. He is a master of poetry and his name is Kevin Moropa. Kevin, hi brother. Hello Ocean. I'm good, how are you? I wish I could wave with you because you're ocean. Ah, ocean and the waves. You see, you see what I mean about choosing the right words. <laughs> so, Kevin, yeah. um, would you just please give us a background of who Kevin is? Just let the people know who you are. Okay, I am Tabang Kevin Moropa. Uh, Tabang is my first name. Kevin Mokopas. Kevin is my second name, you understand? Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's that's the whole formalities. But uh, born and bred in Maruba, you know, got to grow up in in Limpopo, a bit of Limpopo, a bit of Kimberley, you know, uh, where I grew up. I grew up around an area where there was uh, for me back then I did not understand that there was apartheid you understand I just thought maybe people were living in one area yeah. but I was just uh, shocked at the fact that there were different people from my people, you know, African people. So I'm from there and poetry you know I did poetry ever since high school uh, started reading books in grade two and I think that's where the love came uh, for poetry, you know, because reading books gave me an imagination and I could imagine things, you know, that's what I think, that's what the generation now lacks, imagination. And I have a background of a lot of hip-hop in my life, uh, I've listened to a lot of hip-hop from, from grade two. Uh, my mom used to come cassettes, though I did not, yeah, cassettes, like, and I did not know what a on those cassettes, I guess there was this thing where we are tape recording. Yes, yes. So my mom used to tape record on top of the original cassettes they gave okay, her. Okay. You understand? Okay. So she used to record like with DMX, Snoop Doggy Dog, Jeru. Uh, so your understand? mom also loved hip hop. Yes, my mom was a listener of hip hop. She was yes. a hippie actually. You know? Okay. I feel like okay. I took a bit of that. From her. <laughs> and you are grateful for that? I know. I'm very grateful. <laughs> Yo, for days. Because now I'm, I'm looking at the person I actually turned out to be. Yeah. So Kevin. Yeah. Very interesting. So now tell me about your journey and this whole poetry and yeah. hip hop. Um, what do we say? Combination. Yes, exactly. Just give us. What did you go through? What have you experienced? Where have you been? Who have you performed with? And all of that. You know. With hip hop, like I said about the cassettes and everything, I've only listened to the music. But when I reached about grade five, I was interested in the words they say. I'm like, wow. So now it wasn't only about how it goes. Yes, the hmm. whole hip hop, the dress code, because we we were actually hyped up because of the the dress code, which was amazing <laughs> at that time. But now when I look at the words, you know, uh, they're what created. That's what that's that's what created. The imagination for me you know but then people did not know anything about me I, I did I did Bantula dance I did Sibutra dance I went to hip-hop dancing and then finally I decided to settle into hip-hop and poetry because why people knew that I was into poetry at school we had rap ciphers at the corner we had rap ciphers inside the school where people can actually realize that uh, there's people like Kevin who can rap and there's people like so and so who can actually do this and that you know so with that you know hip hop was just for me the lyrics not the beats you know I know everybody right now is interested in the beats yeah I'm interested in the lyrics now uh, poetry poetry started with me writing a lot yeah my first poem if to be honest was to somebody I had dated in high school. Yes. You know? I did not I did not even know that I can write. Okay. Like that's the thing. Like I did not even know that I can write. Until she just did something to me and yes. I was like, 
I'm gonna write this. Okay. And I wrote it, and after I wrote it, I read it. I was like, wow, this is this sounds like Shakespeare yeah, this stuff. This is good. Yes. And I started writing. Every girl I would date, I would write something. Every girl. Oh, so I would you date. got the inspiration from the girls you yeah. dated. Mm. If many, if, if people would would say, just like Shakespeare, they would yeah. say, uh, I got my inspiration from love. I'm not a love poet. Please get it right. <laughs> I no, started because, out as a love poet. Oh, you, that's where you start. I, that's why I started as a love poet. I think starting out as a love poet means I love poetry. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to you, like, <laughs> I know. I told you just know how to select the right words. <laughs> so yeah, that's where it came out. But then, in any case, I've, I've been on stage uh, with the likes of Afura Khan. Yes. He's the CEO and founder of uh, Word and Sound, which is based in Joburg. Yes. I've, I've opened up for the soil where I was with D Poet and McGee Keys. Um, I've been with Tando Gutelezi, who was a slam poet. I just love your story. Like, your journey is just so amazing. Yeah. Now, while on that point, tell us what do you think of um, this industry, like the poetry and the hip hop. In, in our community, in Middleburg to be specific. Well, what's your take on it? So the industry makes me angry, you know, for days. Like, uh, I think about... There's a poem I once wrote, it's titled, Exploitation is the only thing that grows here. You understand? In that I mean, we, we always listen to motivational speakers tell us about how you reap what you sow, the seeds you plant and so forth right but here I feel like people are focusing on watering exploitation rather than watering the exact skill the exact development the exact craft that happens here in Murabur okay. so are you saying that people are just overlooking the talents that is and does yes they are I mean yes they are I mean, you understand? I mean, if 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 I'm in Murderberg and I look at the gig guide in Murderberg, yeah. we have many places where there's something happening. Yes. I don't want to mention names, but it, there's many places where there's like a lot happening every weekend yeah. from Thursday until Sunday. You understand? Yeah. But in in those four days, you'll never hear that there's a day for hip hop, there's a day for poetry, there's a day for jazz. It's a day for what not, you understand? The industry in Murderberg revolves around DJs. You understand? It feels like in Murderberg, the only artists that are here are DJs. You understand? That's why I'm saying I'm saying this because now I look at many of my fellow artists. You know, they get to want to perform in events, but they can't. People who are doing events for the local artists, I respect you all my heart. Understand. That's what I like. And also, if you're an artist, don't stop pushing. To the elders, as much as I am angry with you all, please try and guide the young ones because they need it anyway. Yeah, yeah. Kevin, we could go on and on and on and talk. Mm. But due to time, we're going to have to come to yeah. the end of our interview. And we thank you so much for your time. And we're hoping that people hate you and that the industry may change. So ladies and gentlemen, that was me with Kevin Moropa. Uh, we are Talisa Kumi News Report on Facebook. Please do like our page to see me. And subscribe on their channel. Yeah, YouTube channel. It's on YouTube. Yes. Talisa. So if you're an artist and you know that you have a responsibility, like the page, go to YouTube, subscribe, and then you would have done your part. Talita Kumi News Reports. Out. Retweet. Now I eat. Just.